All right. So official welcome, once we're recording, um, to day six, Money Tools. Um, hey, Malini. I wonder who else is here to play with today. And I got to find a better arrangement to put my phone on so I can see all the comments here, all your questions, your lovely comments. And we're talking about asking for money. So how many of you find it difficult to ask for money? I know I used to find it very, very difficult to ask for money. Uh, more so when I was practicing architecture. And for those of you who don't know, I am an architect as well. <laughs> okay, And I have been practicing architecture almost all my life, actually, um, designing for friends, designing for ourselves. And yes, um, till a few years ago, I was doing it professionally as well. So a couple of years ago, and uh, it, it used to be very difficult uh, before I got into access, before I started using these money tools to ask people for money. Because whenever a client would walk in, all that would go on in my head while I was discussing uh, design with them was how much should I ask for? Will they pay me this much? If I ask for an X amount, they might just walk away and I won't have any client. If I ask for less than this, it won't be fun for me. Is this enough? Is that enough? And I would just lose out on uh, the discussion. I would lose out on engaging with the client. I would lose out on enjoying the process. So a lot of times when you get into this struggle, this tussle about asking or not asking for money, how much or how much not you should be asking, whether or not you should be asking or whether you should be giving stuff out for free because clients would walk away or because they wouldn't pay you or for whatever reason, or just because it made you uncomfortable to ask for money. Um, is, is has it been fun? Like, just look at it. And I know I'm not the only one because it wasn't really fun for me. So I am um, wondering if any of you have any comments to that. Though I don't see any viewers here. So yes, it's going to be more along unless people join in and ask questions. So what is it um, that actually made me reflect on what is it that does not allow me to ask for money? And Voila, there are these amazing access tools, um, the How to Become Money Workbook being one, um, the Right Riches for You book being one, and all the different uh, classes that I took on my road to becoming a CF. Uh, it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey, and I've learned so much. And I've been sharing these tools, some of them, the beginner tools with you guys. Today's day six, by the way. And um, the 10% tool is one which actually allows you to have enough money. You know, why we, uh, why access says from what I understood to take out a 10% of all uh, money that comes in is because when you hit a certain point and oh, by the way, for all of you asking, what do I do with that 10%? Oh, don't do anything with it. So one more thing, guys, which is actually a tool I am going to put up tomorrow as well, is how many of you give money a job of going somewhere, of paying your bills with, or doing something with it even before it, it has already come in? Like, let's say, for example, somebody, a client or someone has already told you, or you know that a certain amount of money is coming in and you already start planning, you know, Ye paisa itna idhar jayega, itna idhar jayega. Se bill pay karungi. oh, that amount I'm going to use for my holiday, that amount I'm going to get my dress with, that amount, oh, I have to pay this bill with, that amount I'll keep for that class <laughs> or whatever, you know, um, maybe jewelry. And oh, suddenly it doesn't come in. What happened? You already spent it before it came in. And does money, and it's all energy, guys. You know, so when we say, does money like to come to a place where it's not honored, it's not valued, it's not enjoyed? Would you like to go to a party where you're not enjoyed, where you're not honored, where you're not, um, you know, respected? 
basically uh, you wouldn't right similarly if you treat money as an energy that would like to be with a similar compatible energy that of joy that of laughter that of fun that of not making it significant how many of us make it significant that of not just giving it away or throwing it away even before it's come in right uh, so that is one of the things that you got to pay attention to don't spend your money before it comes in and that's that's the tool for tomorrow also and it does not mean that you can use the tool that i give today only on that day <laughs> you can use it all the time so what if you started watching your thoughts what if you started looking at am i spending my money even before it's coming okay so the 10 percent account is basically honoring amount what you do is you keep a 10% um, away, um, not saving it. You're not saving it for a bad time, for a rainy day, um, not uh, for something, not as an investment. Um, it is honoring of you. Like a lot of cultures and religions have this thing. You know, you're like, uh, whatever money is coming in, you take out a 10%, give it to charity, take out a 10%, give it to the poor, take out a 10%, give it to the church, give it to the temples, whatever. Um, what if this 10% was honoring of you, like tith to the church of you or tith to the temple of you, which is honoring of you because when you're putting it in, in, um, in a temple or in the church, you're honoring God. What if you are the source and you're honoring yourself first? And I'm not saying you're greater than God for all of you who do believe in God. Um, although for me, it is oneness. It is this energy that I resonate with that is, god for me uh but that's a conversation for another day what i'm trying to say is that that 10 percent is honoring of you it's an honoring amount which you don't give a job like i just said don't give it a job oh i'm keeping this money aside for dash for something and invariably you have this energy in your head whenever you put money aside oh i'll use this for that i'll use this money for that for that purpose for this thing for that person for a gift for whatever no, please don't give it a job. The moment your mind starts working like that, use the clearing statement, go destroy and uncreate it all, right and wrong, good and bad, pot and purple, nine shorts, boys and beyonds. That's the access consciousness clearing statement, okay? So um, now coming back to asking, all right? Um, that 10% thing I wanted to put in, because we spoke about it yesterday and somebody was asking, what do I do with the 10%? So just put it aside and um, you can actually buy gold with it. By the way, if you really want to do something with it, you can buy something that goes up in value, um, like land or gold or something that you know for sure, not stocks. Oh, I knew that stock is going to go up. So I put in that. No, not stocks. Nothing volatile. Nothing that has a likelihood of changing. Like gold and silver, you know for sure I'm going to go up. So that you can buy with your 10% account. Um, nothing else. Okay, just keep it, keep it, okay? And what happens is, and this also links to this asking thing because a lot of times we don't ask because we think we lack, right? Isn't it like, a, what is it called? A, what, a, a type 20 or what is that word? A 2020, no, <laughs> catch 20. It's called a catch 20, my God, okay, cool. So it is like a catch 20. You don't ask because you think you lack. So like this example I was giving you about talking to clients when uh, when they would come to me for designing their houses or offices or whatever they want to design spaces. Because I thought I lacked enough clients, because I thought there wouldn't be enough people pay, paying me money, I could not ask for money either, right? Because I wanted to hold on to that client. I wanted to hold on to um, that one project so you see, anytime you're unwilling to ask for something, please ask, is there an energy of lack here? Is there um, a shortage that I feel? And you destroy and uncreate that, right? And also, like I said, when you're not able to ask, it kind of takes you away from being present in this moment, right? So what if we could do this little exercise? And I just wonder if there's anyone else joining us today uh, on live doesn't look like so let's do this you can watch it later you can watch in the future if you're watching it on youtube or listening to it at soundcloud you'll have it in the future too whenever that future is tomorrow day after later sometime so 
push down your barriers and that's the tool because our barriers are something that come up particularly so with money automatically like a moment some you you realize somebody's going to give you money or somebody could give you money oops all of those barriers come up i like how much should i ask how much should i not ask and all of those different things and it could be so many other different things for you and one thing that before we go to get on to this exercise is looking at what is stopping me from asking now when you were children were you um allowed to ask were you allowed to ask for food were you allowed to ask for chocolates were you allowed to ask for something you really wanted to have like a great toy a nice dress or did you uh, perceive an energy of wrongness around asking and when i say perceive an energy i mean the moment you asked for something you were either wronged or you knew you would be wronged or maybe you know sometimes we grow up in families where there isn't enough money i'm not saying that um there is shortage but you know this point of view of hard earned money money doesn't grow on trees you got to be careful around money and when we grow up around points of views like those what happens is you become wary of what comes out of your mouth you become wary of what you desire you become wary um careful about what you say so that it might not hurt your parents hurt your caregivers um because they might not be able to provide that for you so it was kind to not ask them for money or not ask them for extra stuff uh not ask them for uh you know something that you just wanted just for the heck of it like a new dress oh you have three dresses already why would you need a new dress is a justification you could have in your head you know um so was asking recognized as right or wrong in um while you were growing up please ask that and if you have bought into the wrongness of asking oh if i ask i'm wrong because this energy then we carry over uh into our future into our careers into our businesses it's difficult for us to ask for raises in our jobs it's difficult to us uh, for us to ask for honoring in our families it's difficult to ask for time for myself space for myself because asking is wrong so it's not only about money and of course asking clients for money asking people to pay you the money that they owe you from a very very long time and you're like oh it's okay you know it'll come it'll come but it doesn't come it's okay i'll find space i'll find time but it doesn't happen why because asking in your world is wrong you've made it wrong or other people had it wrong you just tapped into into their worlds now let's say also if you grew up around someone who didn't know how to ask you know like women um in the generation prior to my generation on some people maybe men also i'm not saying it's only women but i know for sure women um were not allowed to ask and if they did it used to be so selfish so wrong and i think it has carried over um somehow somewhere into this generation also and i'm i'm glad children these days are different however when we are growing up around adults um in whose worlds asking is wrong or they've never been able to ask we somehow um and there is this beautiful process in the foundation class and if you haven't taken a foundation class i think it's a good idea to take one there is this process about um uh, mimicking uh which is called biomimetic mimicry where you kind of take on uh people's patterns of behavior people's um you know like your mom your dad the way they talk the way they smile the way the the language they use the um even sometimes what we call genetics like oh you know like oh this runs in my family heart disease runs in my family so i might have it too now that's also you with your energy and your point of view asking your body to mimic a particular pattern a particular behavior a particular you know like how people say you look like your mom you look like your dad that's your body's way of mimicking a certain behavior and i don't remember how we got into oh yeah the asking bit <laughs> i was thinking how this is connected to money yeah even um you know um patterns of behavior on money as well so um 
whose patterns of disharmony around money are you mimicking that do not allow you to ask? Please ask this question and start observing if you have taken on uh, patterns of disharmony around money. Um, patterns of disharmony around money could be not being able to ask for it, not being okay with having too much, um, making yourself wrong for spending money on yourself. So what is your pattern of disharmony with money? And who did you take it on from? Whose pattern of disharmony with money are you mimicking? And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pop, online, shorts, boys, and beyonds. So this is another process you can use when you're not able to ask for money. And please begin to ask, what is what have I made right about not being able to ask for money? What have I be made right about not asking for money? And everywhere that you've made that right, because right and wrong are um, polarities, guys. There's nothing right, there's nothing wrong. There are people who can comfortably ask for their money and they get it. There are people who can't ask for their money and they struggle. The words don't come out of their mouth. And the money sometimes comes to them, sometimes doesn't come to them. And you know what I'm talking about if you have seen both sides of the, of the, of the situation. Like, like my example that I, I gave you earlier, I could not, I could not ask for money even after I had done the work to the extent that I gave, up, gave away so many designs for free thinking it's okay. I would just justify it. You know, I would say, oh, poor girl. Her mom's not well. She's bringing her to the hospital. And it's okay if I designed a house for her. Like I would I would just design three floors that she'd already paid an architect about 50 grand for uh, and who'd done a horrible job of it. I sit one night, take an hour, uh, design all three floors and I just give it to her and I say, it's okay, you know, it's a gift. You know, that's how difficult it was for me to ask for money. And I would find a reason and justification to not receive the money. So if you're looking at changing your money situation, please start to ask, what have I made right about not asking for money and destroy and uncreate it all? Just go, okay, everywhere I've made not asking for money or receiving money wrong. Everywhere that I've made not asking for money and receiving money wrong, destroy and uncreate it all, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pop, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Everywhere I have made not receiving money, okay. Everywhere I have made... Um, on creative justifications and excuses for not receiving money, I now destroy and uncreate it all. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shows, boys, and beyonds. And then you need to practice to ask, however uncomfortable it is. It's got to come out of your mouth because if you don't ask, can you receive? You can't. If you don't ask for it, you won't receive it. Like, let's say you've gone to a restaurant. <laughs> and you're ordering food how would the person at the table serving you know what you're asking for how would the chef know what to make for you if you don't ask for it similarly how would the universe or your client or somebody who's paying you money know um, they got to pay you unless you ask for it a lot of people don't pay you because I've heard this from clients, you know, people who've been skeptical about asking for money and they've come for workshops, they've come for sessions, they've called me up and said, you know what, I can't ask for money. And we did these exercises. And then they called up or texted the person. And that person said, you know what, I was feeling, I was, thank you for asking because I so wanted to give you the money, but I, I was afraid I would uh, offend you if I gave you the money. <laughs> You know, because you've been so kind to us. Thank you for asking. I really wanted to give you the money. So how many of you are not asking? How many people in your world you have who want to pay you, but they can't give you the money because you're not asking? And everything that is, will you destroy and uncreate it? Please, please. And you know, all that you got to say is yes. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pop, online, shows, boys, and beyonds. Okay, so just wanted to clear these little things before we now come to the exercise. So now comes the practice bit. Use these scaring statements to destroy and uncreate everywhere that you bought on or this pattern of not asking, not being willing to receive or making asking wrong, right? Um, now push down your barriers. So let's do this, push down your barriers. And this is how you do it because your barriers are automatically gonna come up. The moment you have to ask somebody for money, oh my God, I can't ask for it. How am I gonna ask for it? The barriers have come up. You see that discomfort, that restlessness, those are your barriers, could be your barriers. So now just ask all of those emotions, those barriers, those 
points of views to just go down, keep pushing them down. You know, like my hands are going down. If you can't see them, just keep pushing them down into the earth. It's like these little springs that come up. So you got to push a spring down, right? They don't go down on their own. So keep pushing them down, pushing them down, 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 further into the earth. And once they're down into the earth, they can't come up again, but new ones might come up. So now the time, push down your barriers. Just push them down. Take a deep breath and destroy and uncreate everywhere that you think you can't ask. Every way you think asking is wrong, right? Wrong with bad, but for online shorts, boys and beyonds. Push them down, 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 down. And one more time. Whoa, push your barriers down. Okay, and this is, this is an exercise that you could do in front of a mirror as well. It's really cool and it's more effective. But if you don't have a mirror around you, like I like to do it in the shower sometimes. You can do it in the shower. You can stand in front of your mirror and I'm still pushing my barriers down. My hands are still going down, 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 down to the earth. And you'll feel more relaxed now. A little more relaxed. And if not, just keep pushing your barriers down till you feel more relaxed. Calmer. And you can say these words. <laughs> okay. Now, repeat after me. And we're going to do this 10 times. Think about somebody who owes your money. Or think about somebody who uh, you have to ask for money, but you haven't been able to ask for money. Think about a client that you have a meeting with. Think about your boss if you're asking for a raise. Think about a family member that you want to ask for money or maybe a gift for. And now, let's do this. So repeat after me. Can I have the money now, please? Can I have the money now, please? We're going to do it 10 times. Can I have the money now, please? 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 Are you saying it with me? Can I have the money now, please? Do it. Can I have the money now, please? Can I have the money now, please? Can I have the money now, please? And you can say it at your own pace. You can say it slowly, softly, whichever way, seductively, if you like, whatever works, right? But you've got to say it. And if you practice this enough number of times, it'll be easier for you to say it when you're in front of any person who you have to ask for money from, right? If you don't ask, remember, you won't receive. So use this exercise. And when you're doing it in front of the mirror, if a feelings of discomfort come up, if it makes you restless, agitated, wondering what's going to happen. Oh my God, how can I do this? No, just push your barriers down again. Use the clearing statement, right? Wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, online, shorts, boys and beyonds. Push them down and calmly repeat. Can I have the money now, please? 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 Right? And keep repeating, keep practicing. And you got to practice, guys, because I know if you're like me, you suck at asking. But now I don't suck anymore. <laughs> I can ask now. And um, the beauty is that when you are okay with asking, more or more often than not, people will ask you how much they need to pay you before you have to ask them. It's just because you have a resistance to asking that you encounter people who have resistance to paying. The moment your point of view around asking for money goes away, the moment you get comfortable with asking for money, the moment you get okay with receiving money for whatever service, product that you're providing and just receiving money even for no reason at all. Yeah, that's another one. Receiving money for no reason at all. Right, we'll talk about that later maybe next week or on another live just remind me if that things in your world but that it is true that the moment your point of view around asking goes away people will ask you before you have to ask them to pay you they'll ask you how much do i pay you hey here's the money now so what if you could receive money before you provided the service what if you could receive money for just being you? What if you could receive money just because you could receive? What if you could receive money just because you can? And everything that doesn't allow that, will you destroy and uncreate all? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pop, on night, what's boys and beyond. So that's it from me today, guys. I don't see any comments here. So I don't know if you have any other questions. If you do have questions, please put them up below this um, video on the Facebook group showing up as you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe you could just go Google um, showing up as you Facebook group uh, with my name. You'll find it there. You're more than welcome and warmly invited to join the group. We keep having these discussions here. 
we have um, a lot of tools coming up, plus a lot of information about the sessions and classes that I do. And um, yeah, I'm starting money, I'm starting money mentoring sessions also this month. Um, reach out to me if you're looking for personal sessions uh, on this particular topic or any other topic. I love to facilitate other topics as well. So see you tomorrow with day seven and more tools on money. And I hope you create a lot more money than you currently are. And what else is possible? Truly, how does it get any better than this? Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.